here at Master Maker. We focus on components, clasps, focals, specialty findings, and of course beads. And I show you all of the really cool ways that you can use these and incorporate them into your jewelry making to help you become a Master Maker. I'm so glad to see everybody. I want to do a quick shout out to everybody who is watching from Bead Fest. Hello to all of you. I wish I could be there in person, but this is the next best thing. So thank you for joining me. I'm so happy to see you. Got lots of people coming in already. Hello, Mary Bell. How are you? It is good to see you. Hi, Anita. Welcome in. Brenda. It's really cool that we can stream to Bead Fest, right? But that we also have our regular audience here. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Debbie. Julie, how is everybody? It's so good to see you guys. I hope that everybody has had a fantastic week. And I hope that those of you who have been at Bead Fest have had a great time. I hope to uh, to inspire you as you're out doing some shopping at Bead Fest. And um, maybe pick up something here while you are with us, right? All right, so a couple of little things to touch on before we get started with today's show, the housekeeping as usual. First and foremost, I would like for you guys to hit those heart buttons. Anytime you see something that you love, anything that you see that you like, any kind of technique, bead, uh, component, anything that you see that's going on that you are a fan of, hit those heart buttons and share the love right? Got to see all those hearts coming through. Really, really important. And if you are also feeling extra loving today, please be sure to share this anywhere that you are able to do so. So if you are part of a social media group of some variety that allows you to share videos, please be sure that you share this video there or feel free to share this on your own social media as well. We want to put our feelers out there and reach all of the creators that don't know about us yet, right? And can you believe it? There are still creators out there who don't know. They don't know about Jewel School. They don't know about JTV Extra. They don't know about JTV.com. They don't even know about Master Maker. And we want to reach all of them. Uh, and we want to bring all of those people in and get them creating because we have, an, we have a pretty amazing community here. And uh, we'd like to welcome them in with open arms. At any point during the show, guys, you guys can hit that shop button at the bottom of the screen. That's going to pull up all of the information about what is in the show today. So if you are interested in what's coming up and you can't wait, uh, or if you just want more information about something that I am showing you, feel free to click that shop button. It's going to bring up all of the information about the items that are in the show. You can also add those to your cart and completely check out just by using that shop button. And the cool part about that is that you are not going to miss anything. It makes me really small, but I don't go away, which is fantastic because sometimes when you have to navigate away, it's really hard to get back and you feel like you missed something. So you can do all of the shopping and all of the uh, information gathering while you are watching the show. It's just going to make me small. Uh, I'm not going to go anywhere. It's like a pocket size Sarah, just in case you need one of those. Don't know why you would, but I mean, <laughs> right? All right, so in case you do miss something, though, because I know stuff happens, right? In case you do have to miss anything, you can always come back and watch this as a video on demand, which is a great way to re- familiarize yourself with the items in the show. Uh, if you've ordered some of the things that were in the show today and they come to you and you've forgotten what you were going to do with them, you can always come back, rewatch this and be re-inspired, right? You can rewatch the project. You can rewatch and see what some of the finished pieces were. Um, so you don't ever have to miss anything. All right. So I see lots more familiar faces. Hello, Mary and Wanda, Christy, Teresa. It's so good to see all of you. All right. I've got a fun show for you guys today. I've got some really cool components and I've got some really fun beads. I've got a little bit of everything going on today, but one of my very favorite things, very simple, but one of my very favorite things uh, to use in jewelry making I have in today's show. So I'm really excited to show it to you. All right. So I'm not going to waste any more time. I am going to turn you guys around and we are going to get started with some fabulous eats. All right. Don't want to give too much away. I know you can see just a little bit at the top of my screen there, guys. Try to keep everything hidden, though you can hit that shop button at any point if you want to see what is in today's show. All right, so let's start out. Let's start out with some beautiful matte rose quartz. And that's not all, but I do have rose quartz in my hand. So I've got a set of 10, 14 to 15 inch strands. Look at the rose quartz, how beautiful. 
How beautiful is that? So this matte finish is really popular. It's been going on for a couple of seasons now. This matte finish is just about everywhere. Uh, it's really awesome in beads because you can take something that is normally something that maybe creates a little bit of sparkle and that matte is going to tone it down just a little bit to give your jewelry pieces a little bit of moody, uh, just kind of a moody feel to them. And I mean that in the best way possible right? You just want to be a little bit subdued in your designs. That matte finish is definitely going to be a whole mood in itself. I've got four strands of the rose quartz in matte. I also have four strands of tiger's eye as well. This all goes together, by the way. I've got four strands of that, and if that's not enough yumminess for you, I've also got two strands of sodalite. Again, this matte finish is absolutely beautiful. Look how pretty that is. So like I said, 10 strands, that's 14 to 15 inch strands. So these are not short strands. These are a long strand of beads here. You've got a lot to work with and that matte finish. It's like the complete opposite of the metallics. Remember last week on the show, we had metallics that are just as popular as the matte. So there's really something for everybody as far as bead finishes are concerned here lately, which I think is really, really cool. What is also pretty cool is that you can mix both your mattes and your metallics together. So if you grabbed some of those beads from last week, you wanted to mix them with some of this matte finish, you're gonna come up with some really stunning designs. 10 strands. And I've still got more beads for you guys. I'm kind of in love with these though, not quite ready to let them go, but I guess I will. I do promise to use some of these in some of our projects today though. So this won't be the last time you see these. They're pretty amazing. All right, I'm gonna sit these over here to the side and then I've got three more strands of something for you that I think you guys are really gonna like. Now we've done wooden beads before that were in bright, bright colors. I've got marbled paint wood strands. This is a set of three in tube. They're like tube shaped, right? They're approximately six to 23 millimeters, give or take, as far as your sizes are concerned. So you've got kind of your sweet spot right in here. Then you've got a little bit bigger and then you've got these really large <clears throat> 23 millimeter beads. Now I say these are a little bit different than the ones that I had before. The ones that I had before were really, really bright. They were cheerful, happy beads. These are also really bright and cheerful, but in a way that is not overpowering. So maybe you loved the wooden beads because you loved the weight of them because they're very lightweight. They're great for places where if you live somewhere where it's a really high humidity and super hot outside, you know sometimes wearing jewelry can be kind of hard to do, right? It's like the heavier the piece, the worse you sweat. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. You know, it makes you it makes you even hotter to have on a lot of jewelry, but wooden beads is a great alternative <clears throat> to weighing yourself down because they're nice and lightweight. Well, these have those brilliant pops of color without being like crazy bold, right? So this might be for those of you who either want to mix these in with the other bright, bold colored wooden beads that we've had previously in the show. Or if you do love the weight of those wooden beads and you love the colors, but it was just a little too bright for you, this is definitely kind of the toned down uh, version of those wooden beads that we had maybe two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. They were a lot of fun. I'm a huge fan of wooden beads. I think that they're super versatile. You can really use them in a lot of different ways. They have a nice large hole on them. So these are gonna accommodate a lot of different sizes of stringing material. You are always gonna be able to use these with your bead stringing wires, but you're also gonna be able to thread these onto hemp, to nylon cord. You're gonna be able to put these onto some rope, which really gives you a lot of versatility when you are creating. They're a lot of fun to work with. And this pink color, I don't know if you can tell from my nails or not, but it's, uh, I'm kind of a fan, kind of a fan. So these are really, really beautiful. And believe it or not, they work really well with the other beads that I already showed you. So if you wanted to mix in your rose quartz with these, I think they would really be lovely. The rose quartz and the brown or the rose quartz and the pink. Oh, well, it would help if I was holding the rose quartz, wouldn't it? <laughs> I think that would be a beautiful design. There's just something really cool about that matte combination with those wooden beads. So yeah, hopefully I'm inspiring you today, giving you a lot to think about, right? 
All right, well, if that's not enough, I do have components for you as well. I'm gonna start out with the connectors. So I've got some Indonesian inspired connectors. I've got a set in four different styles in silver tone and 20 different pieces. Okay, this is a lot of connectors and I do wanna show them to you like, I believe that's all of them there, right? There are five of each of the styles and they're really quite beautiful. They have a lot of really beautiful texture to them really really beautiful so we've got these that are kind of oval shaped we have some round ones here they're not perfectly round but really cool the texture is everything in these loving those i think this might be my favorite i love the texture on these these really sparkle and shine in person they're absolutely beautiful and you guys know i'm a sucker for anything with connectors on it right this one has the two connectors but it also has the hole in the middle so that is an opportunity for you to add all kinds of other dangles to this if you wanted to really really pretty and then we have another one that is kind of oval shaped like the ones here but these have a slight little curve to them so that they're going to sit just a little bit differently in your piece of jewelry, uh, particularly if you're gonna use these as a bracelet piece with that slight curve, it's just gonna make them sit nicely up against the skin, which is really nice. And you guys have seen me do some crazy things with connectors. I'm gonna use some of these in our project today, but I'm also gonna use these in conjunction with something else. So let me set these to the side. Now don't forget, you can always hit that shop button. If you want more information about anything that you see in the show today, please feel free at any point to hit that shop button. Even once we've moved on to the project, you can always call back all of that information about everything. If you're curious as to how many there were, again, you can, you can always pull that back up. All right, now this is one of my very favorite things in jewelry making, and it is so simple but something that can really kind of change the entire look of a piece. And that, my friends, is a bead cap. I have Indonesian inspired bead caps, a set of <clears throat> five styles in antique silver tone. That's 200 pieces total. There's a ton of bead caps here, which is wonderful because if you are a bead cap person, and if I'm, if you're not a bead cap person, I hope that I'm gonna convert you, okay? I, I love bead caps. But if you are a bead cap person, you know that once you get started with a bead cap, it kind of just takes over and you get, you really get carried away. And before you know it, you've used a ton of bead caps. There are a, a what, five different styles here and there's a ton of each one of them. So I just kind of wanted to show you just so that you can see just how many bead caps. I say 200 and that is, it's a lot different to actually see 200 than to say it. So we've got this little style right here, which I love. So pretty, it's got that nice smooth top, but then it has all of that texture around the edging. A little bit bigger size here. Those are really fun. This is just a little bit bigger. This is gonna fit some of your larger beads. It's really pretty as well. All of them are pretty. And then you've got some of the smaller sizes here, which are a lot of fun as well. A bead cap can really kind of change the whole mood. You can string an entire piece with no bead caps and it can be absolutely beauty beautiful. And you restring the entire piece and you pop a couple of bead caps in there, it changes absolutely everything. It just adds a little bit of extra texture and dimension to your beads. A little pop of uh, metal can really kind of change the feeling of an entire piece. This is the last one here. This one's pretty cool because it's like a double layer. I could hold on to it, that would be great. It's like a little double layer bead cap, which I love. So one of my favorite things to do with bead caps is a stack them up. And if you followed me for a while, you know that I'm a huge, huge fan of stack em ups. And stack em ups are basically just a really easy, fun, I'm just gonna give you like a quick little example here. We're not gonna do a whole, a whole project with a stack em up, but it's just a really kind of cool way to stack up your favorite beads and break them up a little bit. I, I mostly use stack em ups uh, as earrings, right? And <clears throat> the bead cap is everything to a stack em up. A lot of people are like, what is she talking about? What on earth is a stack em up? A stack em up for me, it's obviously not a professional term. I just kind of came up with it, is where you just take your favorite things and you stack them up, literally. Literally just stacking up. Let me grab some of this beautiful soda light. 
take some of your favorite beads and stack them up to create easy, easy designs, like easy earrings. But you stack them in a way that really kind of utilizes your bead caps in really different ways. So like I may thread on a bead cap and like dangle a bead from down here, thread on a bead cap and then thread on a bead cap going in the opposite direction. Look at what I've created already. That's just a combination of two bead caps and I've not even added any beads to this yet, right? I mean, I'm just quite literally stacking things up. Add on a few beads to this, throw in another couple of bead caps, and you've turned what was once just two bead caps and a bead into something that has so much personality, right? You wanna add to this? Let's add to it. Let's take some of these smaller bead caps. These make great earrings, great focals. They're really, really easy, and quite honestly, the epitome of instant gratification jewelry, which you guys, if you're a fan of mine, you know, I love instant gratification jewelry. Look how beautiful. I've taken two beads, two beads, three bead caps. Let's just top this off with one. If we happen to do a wrapped loop, add an ear wire to it, maybe dangle another little bead underneath here, right? That's a beautiful pair of earrings and we've not used a whole lot of our materials, right? Those of us who are really, really careful about where we spend our money, particularly those of us who are into jewelry making because it can get quite expensive. That hobby can really kind of turn into something that costs you a lot of money if you're not really careful about it. Buying 200 bead caps at one time and using three or four bead caps and three beads, you know, what, six beads for a, for a pair of earrings total, handful of bead caps and you've made something absolutely beautiful and you still have a ton of materials to work with. That's really important to me. And I found that a lot of makers that I talk to, that's really important to them as well, right? You want to give something beautiful. So you've got this beautiful soda light, but you're not using 15 of them. You're only using three at the most, right? Two, depending on whether you want to dangle one from the bottom or not. You've got a beautiful pair of earrings and you can say, look here, you know, I've, I've got soda light earrings in my, on my webpage or I've got soda light earrings, rose quartz earrings in my, or on my, <laughs> goodness. <laughs> Hold on, words are hard. I've got those in my craft booth, right? You're able to offer really beautiful beads without using a ton of them at one time. Those bead caps are gonna be a great way to really kind of extend the life of all of your gemstones and your crystals and your favorite things while adding, you know, a little bit of flair to things, right? All right, so that's my stack em up for you guys. I do have a full project for you guys today though. We are gonna put together a really fun statement necklace and we're gonna use some of those connectors that I have in the show, as well as mixing in some of these bead caps. Feel free to recreate this at any point that you want to and use your own bead caps, right? Use some of the ones from here that I didn't use. I can, I'll go ahead and show you. I'm gonna use some of the smaller bead caps in this project, but you could recreate today's project using any of the bead caps and it's going to give you a completely different look. You can also switch up the connectors as well. So if you don't particularly care for the connector that I use, use a different one from the set because you've got a lot of them to choose from. All right, so let me lay this out for you and then we're going to get started. <clears throat> if you're curious about the beads that I'm going to be using in today's project, I am going to use some of this beautiful matte tiger's eye, uh, but I do think that this project would look amazing in any of the beads. So... Yes. Cecilia says, I love bead caps. They can make a simple piece look like a million bucks. I agree with you 100%. Yep. And Janelda says, the creation is yours, not like what else, what everyone else has. Exactly. Exactly. And the bead caps are just a great way to kind of not only just extend, you know, how much of, of the materials that you're using, but to also give it like your personal flair. You pick a favorite bead cap and use it, right? Use it everywhere. All right. So... Let's see here. I'm gonna raise you guys up just a little bit, just so that I have a little bit more room to get underneath the camera here so that we can start our project. So let me show you what I have in mind. I'm gonna lay this all out for you first, and then we're gonna put it all together. I always like to kind of show you where we're going. I do have a couple of finished pieces for a little bit of inspiration here to show you if you're interested in some other other ways that you can use these connectors. But I do want to show you these are the two connectors out of the ones that I showed you earlier that we're going to be using. So the ones that have that slight curve to them and then the round ones, which were my personal pick for favorite out of those. 
But real quick, let me just show you. So with some of the connectors that I'm not using, I've got a, another little example here of instant gratification jewelry for you. So this is the, the first of the connectors that I showed you and all I have added here is just jump rings and a clasp. Literally that's all that I've added and I've got a beautiful piece of jewelry here that looks like a high-end piece of jewelry, right? And I, have, I still have tons of connectors left over. I just used a handful of jump rings to connect the connectors together, stuck a clasp on here, but I could very easily exchange this clasp for a beautiful, you know, a, a really beautiful upscale looking clasp if I wanted to. You could add beads to this if you wanted to. Take some of those rose quartz beads, pop those in between the connectors or use them as dangles uh, from each one of those jump rings if you wanted to or just leave it like it is, right? I love metal jewelry. I know a lot of you guys know I'm, I'm a huge fan of chain and metal pieces. I do love beads and y'all, if you could see this room, you would know that I, I'm I have a bead problem, <laughs> but I do, I do love just metal jewelry as well. And I think there's a great place for that in your wardrobe. If you want to take some of those connectors and again, just instant gratification jewelry here, I'm literally using two beads, two beads, two head pins, handful of jump rings and an ear wire. And I've got a beautiful pair of earrings. This definitely looks like something you would find in a boutique. Uh, but you know, I put it together in less than five minutes. I've got a great pair of earrings here. Swap those out for some of those uh, rose quartz or some of the tiger eye. You could use some of those wooden beads to get a really kind of fun boho chic look. Really easy. You don't have to use a ton of techniques to great to get great jewelry pieces, right? I've said it once, I'll say it again. Beautiful jewelry does not have to be a representation of every skill that you've ever learned. You don't have to incorporate every single technique. Sometimes a little wrapped loop and a couple of jump rings is all you need to have a beautiful piece, right? All right, <clears throat> so let's take some of those, some of those simple skills that we know, right? Some simple loops, wrapped loops, and let's put together a really cool piece of jewelry a statement necklace, if you will, using some of that beautiful tiger eye and some of the uh, connectors here. I'm going to lay this out for you. We're making a tiered necklace, and I've got a couple of pieces of this that are already ready, but we're going to put the rest of it together. Just to show you, these are the dangles, and we're going to do a section in the front. We're going to do like a whole statement kind of up and down, long, short, long, short kind of kind of look here. We're gonna thread some beads in between here and use some of those beautiful bead caps. But this is the focal that we're gonna build. Okay, I'm gonna use four of the shorter connectors here. Well, shorter as, as in length for the overall piece. And then some of the round ones for our longer pieces here. So again, just going to lay out because we've got to build some of this together. I'll show you where we are going with this. Just to give you a little bit of an idea, right? And we're going to use some of those beautiful tiger eye beads as well. We're going to use simple loops. Anywhere I use a simple loop in this design, please feel free to use a wrap loop instead. I, I don't know who decided that simple loops should be called that. I know that that is uh, probably one of the <laughs> One of the most challenging things to do in jewelry making, uh, I, even though it's considered a basic skill, I, I think we all kind of struggle with those simple loops. So please feel free to, to do something other than a simple loop if you want to, right? All right, so I'm basically gonna kind of tier, I'm using like a tiered, not, it's not necessarily tiered because we're going long and short and long and short, but I'm kind of using that same, set up for the beads as well. So I'm mixing some of the larger beads in the middle and some of the smaller beads on the outer edges. So it's all gonna kind of be a cohesive piece. We're gonna take some of the tiger eye beads to run across the top as well with these jump rings running in between some of the bead caps. You'll see it's all gonna come together really beautifully, but I do wanna lay it out for you so that you do get a nice visual of where we are going. And I think that you're gonna be really Really pleased with the results for this, this piece. So you can see I'm just kind of popping the beads in here and we're gonna use eye pins for this. 
However, if you are a cut your own wire kind of person, please feel free to uh, to do that. You don't have to use the eye pins. I just use those because they are quick and easy. And I don't always have a ton of time when I'm with you guys, but kind of getting a, a look at where we're going, right? All right, so now that I've got it all laid out, let's start Let's start constructing our necklace here. So like I said, I'm gonna be using eye pins for this. And <clears throat> if you would like to cut your own wire for each one of these pieces, you're only gonna need about three inches of wire for this. Now I do recommend using 22 gauge or 20 gauge wire, though you can use whatever you want. I do um, know for sure that all of the beads in the show today, uh, all of these, the tiger eye, the rose quartz, and the soda light will fit on 20 or 22. And of course they'll fit on the 24 as well. I say that because sometimes the sometimes the beads like this have a really tiny drill hole. These have a nice, a nice hole on them. So you're gonna find that you're not gonna have any trouble finding the right kind of wire to work with these. All right, so I'm gonna start out, we're gonna start out making our longer components first. Okay, which is um, let's see, we've got two larger tiger eye and the four smaller ones with our little donut component here. So I'm going to start out with an eye pin. I'm going to use my chain nose pliers to open up the eye pin and then I'm going to go ahead and thread on my connector and I'm going to close that back. Now that we've kind of seen where we're going, I'm going to scoot all this out of the way, right? So we can really kind of focus on what we're doing here. All right, so now I'm going to thread on two of the smaller tiger eye beads. I'm gonna thread on two of the larger and two of the smaller. Now feel free to use some bead caps in this as well if you wanted to. Some of those smaller bead caps, if you wanted to pop a bead cap in between here, right, to kind of frame out your larger tiger eye beads, you absolutely can do that. All right, now I'm gonna just do a simple loop here at the top and one of the things I do want to point out is the direction of these loops. Okay, so on the bottom here, you're going to notice when you're looking at this front facing, the loop at the bottom of our eye pin or your pre-cut piece of wire that you're, you're shaping yourself, that loop needs to be facing away from us so that it can connect to the loop that is on the connector here that is facing us. That's really important uh, going forward because we want everything to hang in a certain direction. And so we need to kind of be mindful of which direction our loops are going in. So the loop that I'm gonna create at the top here needs to be facing away from us. Or, well, if you're holding it, looking at this loop, it needs to be facing towards you. I'll show you. It just needs to be the opposite, I guess. I'm using more words than I need to here. All right, I'm gonna come in with my cutter tool, right? I'm gonna trim off about well, a, a little bit of that wire. You just want to leave yourself about a fourth of an inch, whatever you're comfortable with. I do find that some people like to make their loops a little bit larger than other people, but I like to leave myself about a fourth of an inch of wire. I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers. I'm grabbing the tip of that wire and I'm going to roll it back towards myself, towards the beads to create my loop. Now, this is where that, that placement of the loops which direction they're facing comes into play. This loop needs to face towards you. The one down here needs to face away from you, okay? That's so that when we add this to a jump ring, that jump ring will be facing away from us and it's gonna hang really nicely. So that's why you wanna be sure that your loops are going in opposite directions, okay? All right, on the bottom of this, I am going to use a head pin to put a little bit of a dangle and you can get as, as crazy with this as you want to, or you can just keep it simple. I'm just gonna keep it simple by using one of the smaller tiger eye beads, and I'm going to just do another simple loop and attach it here. Again, feel free to use a wrapped loop if you prefer, but I'm just gonna grab the wire right where it is exiting the bead, give it a bend, All right? I'm gonna come in with my cutter tool, trimming off the wire, leave myself about a fourth of an inch. Then I'm gonna use my round nose pliers to grab that wire and then we're rolling back to create our loop. We're gonna take our chain nose pliers. Now that we've closed that loop, we're actually gonna open that loop again, but we're gonna treat it like 
an, a jump ring, right? We're gonna open it with a twist. Don't ever pull it apart. If you pull it apart, you're never gonna get that round shape again. And listen, if you're already struggling with the shape of your simple loops, you definitely don't want to pull them apart because it's really just gonna make that even worse. So <laughs> trust me on this one, you just wanna twist, right? Just a twist to open it, you're gonna take it, you're gonna thread that on to the bottom connector of your, of your little component, you're gonna twist to close that back. You've got yourself a little dangle here. Now that would be a really cute earring that might be a little on the long side for some of you, but you take a couple of the beads out here, pop an ear wire on that, and I think that would be a really beautiful earring. But we are using ours as a drop in our necklace. So we're gonna take an eight millimeter jump ring. It's a little bit larger jump ring. I'll explain the reasoning behind that when we get a little further on into the design, but I'm gonna take that jump ring between two pairs of pliers. And again, just like our, our loop, on our dangle, we're gonna twist to open, right? Again, don't wanna pull that apart because we'll never get that nice round shape again. We're gonna thread that onto our jump ring and then we're just gonna twist to close it back, okay? We're gonna do that to all of the drops that we create, right? So some of our drops I created ahead of time just to kind of save some time. So there's three. We need two more with our looks like a little donut, right? So we need two more. We're gonna create those. Let me set these up here to the side. Again, we're gonna grab an eye pin, opening up that eye pin with a twist. We're gonna attach it to one of the loops on our component, close it back, all right? And then we're gonna use some of our beautiful beads here. We're gonna thread on two of the smaller tiger eye, two of the larger. Hi, Erin, welcome in. We're so glad that you're here. <laughs> Gina says, I've upgraded her jewelry making game. Thank you, you are too sweet, too sweet. I appreciate that so, so much. Hey, I'm just thankful that you let, let me be a part of your jewelry making journey. All right, so I've thread on all six of my tiger eye beads. I've got my larger ones in the center here, and I'm gonna do another simple loop. Again, I want this loop to be going in the opposite direction of the loop that's at the bottom. So I'm gonna grab, hold on to my beads. I'm gonna bend the wire right where it is exiting that top bead, coming in with my cutter tool. Leave yourself about a fourth of an inch of wire. Again, round nose pliers to create our loop. And then we're gonna finish that off with a jump ring. All right, we're gonna make one more of these and then we're gonna switch it up a little bit and make two different little dangles here. We do need to add our little tiger eye bead at the bottom. So we're gonna do that really quickly. Just take one of those smaller tiger eye beads, drop that down onto a head pin and again, another simple loop. Now, if you want <coughs> to do a wrapped loop, you can either do the wrapped loop and wrap it directly to the component, or you can use a jump ring as your go-between. Totally up to you. Just know that every time that you use a jump ring, you're adding a little extra length to your overall design. So always keep that in mind when you're making that decision about whether or not you're gonna do a wrapped loop and wrap it directly to something. For a design like this, that extra length may not matter too much, but you would be surprised at how much difference a four millimeter jump ring can make in length total, especially if you're using several of them, right? All right, so there's one more. So, so far, so far we've got four of these. We're gonna do one more really quickly, and then we're going to do something a little different. The other drops for this, use less beads, but a longer component. All right, so we're just attaching that eye pin. Grab some of these beads so that I don't have to keep reaching across the screen here. All right, so two of our smaller. Two of the larger. and two of the smaller.
Guys, don't forget, anytime you see something that you love in today's show, to hit those heart buttons and share the love. Also, don't forget that you can hit that shop button at any time and pull up any of the information regarding anything that you see in the show. Maybe you've forgotten or maybe you're coming in late and you want to see what else I had in the show today. You can always hit that shop button. I'm not going anywhere. It just makes me a little bit smaller, but you can check out all of the information regarding what's in the show. And you can add those to your cart and even check out without missing anything. All right, we're gonna do our little bead here for the bottom. Cutter tool. All right, and then we're gonna do our simple loop. And then we're just gonna turn around and open that loop right back up again and attach it to our connector component. Close that back. All right, so for our design, we're going to need a total of five of these, right? And these are going to be the longer ones. I think they would be absolutely beautiful in that rose quartz or the sodalite. But I am a huge fan of tiger eye, so <laughs> it's going to be a great necklace for fall, that's for sure. All right, so I'm going to sit these to the side, and then we're going to do four. Two of these are already ready, so to save us a little bit of time, of the shorter little dangles for our necklace. These are one of the longer components, and we're mixing it up a little bit. This time, instead of using the smaller tiger eye on the bottom, we're using the larger. We're using one of the smaller beads at the top. Again, take note of the direction of the loops that we are creating because it, they need to go exactly the same way as they did with the longer drops that we made. So we're going to do two of these. We've got our two larger beads for the bottom and two smaller beads for the top. Let's start out at the top on this one instead of the bottom. So we're gonna take another eye pin and we're going to twist to open, thread that on, twist to close that back. We're gonna thread on one of these smaller beads. And then again, we wanna make another simple loop here at the top in the wire, coming in with our cutter tool, trim, then you're going to use your round nose pliers to roll back to close up your loop. Now you'll notice that loop's facing me, the one that's connecting to our connector is facing away from me. Okay, our head pin <clears throat> for our larger tiger eye bead on the bottom, simple loop, Bin the wire where it exits the bead. Come in with your cutter tool. Trim. Use our round nose pliers. Grab that wire and roll back. Close your loop and then you're just going to reopen that loop. Chain nose pliers. Twist. Thread. Twist to close. Okay. We're also going to top this one off with a jump ring as well. So we're going to twist to open, thread on our newly formed dangle, twist to close, and that's how easy those come together. Again, this would be a beautiful earring. Pop an ear wire on the top of that, right? So pretty. So, so pretty. Instant gratification jewelry right there. All it needs is an ear wire. All right, let's do one more of those, and then let's, let's create a really fun necklace out of all of these dangles that we've created. All right, so opening our eye pin, attaching it to our component, threading on our smaller bead. This one's on the top. Okay, we're gonna grab the wire where it is exiting the bead, give it a bend. You're gonna come in with your cutter tool. You're gonna trim off. Round nose pliers to grab that wire, roll back to close that loop. If you want to go ahead and add your jump ring to the top of that, you can do that now or you can do it at the end. We're going to close that back and then we're going to do our little dangle on the bottom and all of the drops for this will be ready to go. All right, so bending the wire where it is exiting the bead, cutter tool coming in 
and round nose pliers to create our loop, okay? Open the loop back up, thread it onto the bottom of our connector and close it back. All right, so we've got four of these, the shorter ones. You could use any of the connectors in that set of connectors, right? There were four different styles. You had 20 pieces total. You could use any of them to create the same kinds of drops, right? So we've got four of the short ones and we've got five of the longer ones. They each have a jump ring on the top and this is an eight millimeter jump ring. The largest bead that we have is a six millimeter bead, right around six millimeters for the size of that. Now that's gonna be really important when we go to stringing all of this together and I'm gonna explain that to you as to why that's important here in just a second. But first, we need to get our bead stringing wire ready to go, okay? So whatever bead stringing wire it is that you want to use for your project, uh, you're gonna want to cut about 10 to 12 inches of your bead stringing wire and grab yourself either a crimp tool or I'm sorry, a crimp uh, bead or a crimp tube. I'm gonna use the crimp tubes. I kind of prefer the crimp tubes just because they have a little bit more surface area. For those of you who really struggle with crimping, a crimp tube might be the answer that you're looking for, um, just so you get the hang of it before you switch to a crimp bead because they're a little bit smaller. Sometimes it's a little bit of a struggle, right? All right, so I'm gonna take the end of my bead stringing wire here and I'm gonna thread on that crimp tube and then I'm gonna thread on a wire guardian. You can skip the wire guardian, totally up to you. Uh, if you're gonna skip it, you just want to thread through maybe a jump ring here. Okay, I'm gonna take my bead stringing wire, go back down through my wire guardian and then back down through my crimp tube. Most important part here is you wanna be sure that your wires are running parallel inside your crimp. Okay, you don't want those wires crisscrossing over each other. You wanna be sure that they are going to further separate when you bring in your crimper tool. So the crimper tool, you're gonna to use that back notch. The back notch is the one that's got that, it looks sort of like a piece of macaroni. It's got a tooth that comes down. That tooth is gonna further separate out the wires when you close it down over the crimp right? It's going to help to separate those wires out so that they're not touching inside your crimp. Why does that matter? Because we don't want any abrasion happening, right? Those wires are crisscrossing and then you, you close the crimp tool over it. They're going to crush each other, right? You want those completely separated inside that crimp tube or crimp bead. And you want to be able to see that too. Once you give that a crimp, you can see where that tooth really comes down and separates out those wires. I've got one on the left and one on the right. I've got a nice little bit of space in between there. They're not touching each other. So I know that I've crimped properly. I'm going to take that crimp and turn it sideways, place it into the front notch of the crimper tool. And I'm going to give that a squeeze. It's just going to make it a little bit more compact, right? Just tidies everything up. I'm gonna cut off the excess bead stringing wire because we don't need that. Okay, and now we are going to string up our drops with some beads in between. So I'm gonna start out with one of these small tiger eye beads, okay? Then I'm gonna thread on one of the larger, hold on, no. <laughs> A bead cap. I want to use bead caps. You can do this without the bead caps, but if you've got the bead caps, you may as well use them because they're beautiful and they really do add a pop of metal to the top part of your necklace as well. All right, so a bead cap is going on, then one of my larger tiger eye beads, and then one of my long drops. Now remember, I've got more long drops than I do the short drops, so they're gonna be on the outer edges. So you wanna start with the longer drop, you're gonna thread on that jump ring, and then you're gonna thread on another tiger eye bead, and this is why that jump ring and the bead size are super important. Because look what happens. When I drop those two beads on, those two beads are kissing each other inside that jump ring right? Which is exactly what I want. I don't want that jump ring touching the bead stringing wire like this, where I've got a bead, a jump ring, and then a bead, right? I don't want that because this, and you can already see, it's moving, it's swaying. There's going to be a lot happening when you're wearing this. 
I don't want that metal rubbing up against my bead stringing wire. My bead stringing wire is 49 strands of tiny pieces of steel that have been twisted together and then they're coated in this beautiful nylon that makes it nice and smooth. It, it strings really nicely. What I don't want is for that nylon coating to wear away over time. So to keep my bead stringing wire safe, I do things like use an extra large jump ring here so that number one, my two beads are kissing each other. That jump ring's not touching the bead stringing wire. And I also have enough room to hang my dangle without everything being crowded, right? So that's why I, I, I made the decisions that I made when it came to choosing what materials I was gonna use for this, this piece of jewelry. Okay, I know that seems like a lot of information for just one tiny step, but I promise that's going to really kind of make your jewelry last a lifetime if you if you take precautions like that to protect your bead stringing wire. All right, so now I'm gonna thread on another bead cap. I'm gonna drop that down. Now I'm gonna do another tiger eye bead, this time without a bead cap. I'm gonna thread on one of my shorter drops and another bead, okay? Then I'm gonna thread on a bead cap, one of my beads, one of my long drops. Make sure they're facing the right direction. You can always go back and fix it, but it's nice to get it all thread on the right way the first time. Ask me how I know. <laughs> another one of our beads, and then a bead cap. Right, and then a bead, one of our shorter drops, and a bead. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a bead cap, a bead, One of our longer drops and a bead. Bead cap. You're gonna notice the bead caps are kind of separating my, my drops out as well. So the bead caps are kind of framing the two beads that have the longer drops. And then the ones with the shorter drops, the bead caps are facing in the opposite directions because they're framing the next set of beads. You'll see that more here. I get all of this together. You can kind of see where we're going with all of this. All right, look how pretty. So this is all gonna come together really, really beautifully. All right, so let's just keep going here. We're doing a bead one of our shorter drops, a bead. Okay, drop that down. All right, we're gonna do a bead cap. Bead, a longer drop, a bead and a bead cap. Bead, our short drop, a bead, and then we're gonna finish this off with the other section, this last little section with the bead caps. Bead, our drop, our bead, and a bead cap. And then I'm gonna finish that off with one smaller tiger eye bead and then we're gonna crimp. Now this is just the front of our necklace. <laughs> I did kind of cheat for the length. I'll show you here in just a second, but listen, you've got enough beads to bead the entire length of the necklace if you wanted to. I just did this short section in the front. Um, I'm going to finish this off with <clears throat> some leather, uh, some suede. Uh, you can finish this off with more beads. Totally up to you. All right, so I'm going to use one more of the tiger eye beads. I'm going to thread that on and we're going to crimp. So I'm just using one of the smaller ones. I'm threading on my crimp here and my wire guardian. 
I'm going to come back down through my wire guardian and down through my crimp. And then you're going to pull all of that down again, making sure, just like when we crimped before, that your bead stringing wire is not crisscrossing. Something else that you want to be sure of is before you go to crimp, you want to be sure, just like we talked about, that you've pulled out enough of the slack of your bead stringing wire so that you don't accidentally have one of those jump rings sitting on bead stringing wire. You definitely want to check that before you go to crimp because if those beads are not touching, right, then those jump rings that are oversized that are protecting our wire are not doing any good. So just be sure, right, before you commit to that crimp that everything is as it should be. Okay, so now coming in with my crimper tool, place that into the back notch. You're gonna give that a squeeze. You're gonna turn it sideways, put it into the front notch. And again, give it a squeeze, give it the tug test, make sure that everything is nice and tight and secure, and then you can trim off your excess. All right, we've got a beautiful focal here. And again, if you grabbed those beads that were in the show today, you've got enough of the tiger eye left so that you could bead the rest of the length of this necklace. Um, but I thought that I would change it up just a little bit. I do want to lay this out nice and flat, though, because I do like to see what it looks like. We will put this on the bust at the end, just in case you're curious. But... Um, I wanted to lay it out so you can see how pretty that is. So you're using a combination of those connectors. Again, we've still got plenty of connectors left over, right? There were 20 connectors total. We've only used a fraction of those. Um, they came in four different styles. There was a total of 20 pieces. So I've got leftovers. I can make some, you know, I can make a bracelet if I wanted to, like I showed you before, which is some jump rings. Uh, the, the design on them is gonna match. So whether or not you, um, you use any beads in your bracelet or not, the connectors are still matching each other. So this bracelet would look really beautiful with this, right? I can very easily could convert the earrings that I showed you before with the soda light and pop a uh, tiger eye bead on them. And I would have a beautiful set here and I would still have tons of beads left over, right? And I would still have a few of the connectors left over as well. So just think about that when you're thinking about how much jewelry you can create with all of the things that you see either on Jewel School or here on Master Maker or with any of the other amazing creators that you see on JTV Extra, uh, think about all of the jewelry that you can create because a lot of times the kits that we offer you guys have tons of pieces in them and that's by design because we really want to be sure that we're giving you the, the most bang for your buck for sure. All right, so I did cheat and did this ahead of time uh, so that I could just pop it on here. But if you're curious as to what it is that I did, I took a piece of suede and I cut it uh, to the length that I wanted, folded it in half over a large jump ring. And then I just took some wax cord and created some square knots just to kind of flatten it out here. You could very easily do a wire bundle here with some wire if you wanted to, or you could just tie a knot. You could use some other cord and do like a moose knot, a barrel knot, whatever you wanted. And then at the other end, I just used a simple cord end uh, to bring all that together. But that's what I'm gonna use as a length for my necklace. So I'm gonna take my two sides that I created ahead of time and I'm gonna connect those. And I'm gonna put this on the bust so that y'all can take a look at the finished piece. I think that the suede was a nice touch, but I do think that it would be just as beautiful if I used more of the tiger eye and beaded the entire length as well. Lots of options. You could use chain here too if you wanted to, or a beautiful ribbon. Lots of different ways to create length with your designs when you've got a really cool focal in the front. All right, let me turn you around here. And I am gonna put this on the bust, whoa, before we say our goodbyes, because I want you to see how cool this piece looks. And I wanna thank everybody for joining me today. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your beady journey. Thank you everybody who's watching from Bead Fest. I hope that I have inspired you. For sure. All right, guys, take a look at our finished piece. Now, that's a cool piece of jewelry right there, right? That is such a cool piece of jewelry. We used a ton of those connectors, but I still have plenty to work with. 
<laughs> Janelle said I outdid myself again. I try. I try. You guys know I love statement pieces. So the bigger the better with me. That's why I'm on JTV Extra because I'm always a little extra. Uh, if this is too much for you, you always can kind of uh, bring this down. Tone it down a little bit if you want to. Maybe just use a couple of these, right, to create a pretty little necklace. You just use three of those if you want to. Or you could just as easily turn this into something else. You could make a really cool belt out of it if you wanted to. Uh, you could make the dangle shorter and make a really cool kind of cha-cha style bracelet. So yeah, I hope that I am inspiring you. That is always my goal. I know that you guys are always inspiring me. So I appreciate you for joining me. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody at Bead Fest. Thank all of you who are here in the comments. I appreciate you and love you so, so much. You guys have an amazing rest of your weekend. Those of you at Bead Fest, go find some fun beads for me. Uh, send them my way. I'm so jealous. I wish I could be there with you. The rest of you guys enjoy your weekend as well. Go make something for yourself. I hope that you have had a great time here and that I have helped to encourage you to also become a master maker. You guys have a great weekend and I'll see you guys same time, same place next week, right? For some more fun stuff. Bye guys.